Okay, this is John from Clock Repairs Merseyside. I just thought I'd, I'd, I'd sort of finish dismantling this case before. Anyway, two screws just inside there and that finished undoing the case. Also, what you want to do is take take note of not things, take note of the size of the screws so that you know where they're going to go back and um, save yourself a lot of hassle. If you look at the, this this uh, top piece, obviously it's it's where you know you look through the window and you can see your your platform escapement. If you look, it's pretty much it's been bonded on. It looks like glue or something. It's been bonded on. So I mean I don't know, and it's been lined with some kind of brass trim. I mean we're going to have to be really careful cleaning that up. Uh, I think that's really going to be a careful situation because, I mean, the paint, there's, there's bits of crazing and cracking and, and stuff like that. I mean, yeah. It's obviously enameled as well. It's 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 just a, it looks like it's a piece of copper or something and it's, it's enameled. So we'll stick that aside. Right. Here's your handle. Your handle's just come off, obviously, with them two screws. Well, that can be set aside now your pillars now the pillars obviously they're on screws in there now probably you'll be able to, yeah they're all pretty loose so you could probably maybe put your finger there and you can actually just take your pillars off quite a bit of dismounting really to give it a clean If they don't come off easily, uh, I, 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 I would just, you know, obviously undo the screw a little bit more. Again, take a note of your screws. I mean, they look a bit longer than the last ones that we took out. And obviously when you're putting it back together, I mean, obviously, you know, if you've got four pillars, you're going to have four screws the same. If you've got two screws the same, that's for your top, your handle. You know, common sense prevails with it, with, with a lot of things. Well, there's your pillars again. I'm going to be careful with them, uh, paint-wise, because it, it it's probably not being put on the best way. I'm trying to stay out of shot for you here. As I say, me me, me camera work is not um, not the best. Yeah, so you've got all bits of plate here. I mean, all this can be pretty much cleaned up. It does look to be brass. So we can, you know, make make it look really nice. Right, that's that. Now, movements. Now, your dial, your dial on this particular uh, clock. Let me just get this camera down just a, just a touch. There's my screwdrivers fell on the floor. Um, The dial on this particular clock is held on by posts and three nuts. Now, I've undone the nuts previously while off camera just to, to make it a bit more simple and quicker. So, it's literally got three nuts. So, obviously, you take them off and probably, you know, I, I'd probably use, they, they only need nipping up really. I'd probably use the likes of uh, soft nose pliers or something. To, to get to, to just give them the last final tighten or a pair of snipe nose pliers. I mean obviously we're antique clocks and things can say I mean every clock that comes in here we treat it as if it's a, a priceless antique um, because it's someone's family heirloom or it's some of uh, sentimental value to someone and so you know we treat it that way all the time whether it's a you know a clock worth you know fifty pounds from the auction or if that or you know it, it's it's a it's a fraudulent baker, or you know, and it, it's worth many thousands of pounds. I mean, which, or a breguet, you know, we've worked on them all, and we always treat them exactly the same. We be very careful, and um, we, 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 you know, we, we won't take chances with things. We, we study the situation properly, have a good look, have a good look. She should spend as much time looking at the, the clock movements and, and, and find out everything you can about it. Take notes, take plenty of photographs of it. Um, don't be tempted just to crash into it, um, you know, no matter what experience you've had also as well, because, you know, you've got to be aware that 
other people may have looked at it and other people may not be as, as careful as yourself and so you know they've put the, the you know they, they've left things to, to chance and there's a few hidden traps should we say you know you'll take something to bits and it won't go back together again or you know they'll have done something not not quite right and so you know you've always got to be cautious of it and then take photographs of it um and then maybe you need to have a, if it's something a little you know going to be a bit difficult you need to speak to the customer that's our idea anyway we try our best to get it right our coach right the first time but there's always the odd time right the dial the dial is on a what looks to be a pretty thick piece of brass and you've got your three uh, mounts there which go through the movements into the thing and, and, and go through the movements and then the, 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 the fixed with the nuts but yeah pretty pretty thick some of the engineering on them is, is, is quite substantial really considering what they are I mean some of the engineering on that is, is, is probably better than the likes of some of the carriage clocks you see, you know, well-known makes that you see quite often. Um, they wear French at one time and everything else. Right, getting to the getting to the front of the getting to the movements. Okay, on the back of your movements, obviously you've got your click and you've got your spring and you've got your ratchet wheel, which goes obviously onto your mainspring and then you've got your retainer. Now, obviously the clock is coming to pieces, so you need to undo these. So I'm in shot. Yeah, I am. So there they are at the back. Four screws. So just give them a little undo. Try not to slip with your screwdriver because you don't want to be scratching stuff. So what we do at this point, we just undo everything. I see that one at the bottom is tight again. So... That one's okay. Now this one is got a screw on the front. But for some reason it's giving us a hard time. So we're going to put the screwdriver in that way there. And I'm going to get another screwdriver. And I'm just going to try and coach it. See if we can get a turn on it. Okay, not not so easy. So our next move will be, it's the bottom. It's the bottom post. As you can see, it's the bottom post. So it's got a little hole where the the, the screw thread, uh, where your screw is 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 keep keeping it onto the bottom plate, retaining it onto the bottom plate. So what I would probably do, I would find something that can go in there. Like another screwdriver, like that. And you know, what you've got to be aware of at this point, if it if it's too tight, and as you with with you using steel and it's brass, if, if you uh, have to put too much force on it, you're gonna flatten the thread inside there. So you've got to hope that it's just a turn, which thankfully it is. I mean, there's other ways of doing it. I mean, you could keep hold of the, the pillar, the post by, you know, uh, with, with a, a pair of soft nose pliers, but you, you can't always get a grip on it. So, I mean, that seemed to do the job. I mean, and after that, really, if you needed to, I mean, you could you could, you could could run a, a, a tap through it. Um, and then you could re-thread it that way and, you know, put, you know, clean it up that way. But... Yeah, everything else seems to be pretty, pretty easy. Okay, so I'm just going to pop everything off, off the back plate. Yeah, I'm trying to let you see as much as I can, but I don't want to put it down on the. Uh, let's see what we can do. Right, so I'll just undo them. I'll just undo them. Just 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 take a little bit of pressure off them. Just so I can undo them and I might be able to show you. Um, I might be teaching how to suck eggs obviously as well, but anyway. So here's our back plate. 
so all these screws are now loose so we're just going to pop them all off and they're going to be cleaned up now before you do anything like this I mean the first and very very most important thing to do is make sure that that main spring has been powered down if you haven't if you don't power that mainspring down you'll regret that right so again we're looking to just pop that off there and there's your ratchet wheel that should clean up nicely okay that's your ratchet wheel right now looking at this here now we've got the, the we've, we've got the hand adjuster now to me it looks like it'll just pull off which it did it just pulled off again if you've got you can't get it off by hand use levers like this and apply uh, levers like that very very cheap you can buy them on eBay I think they come from China but you know the stainless steel and, and, and they've been pretty good I mean they're, they're really great for getting um, you know the cannon and pinion off on some clocks and you know they're okay you know you can get it under with you know a, you know a little piece of plastic to protect the movement you know you can you can get a, a good grip on it and you can you know pressurize it off and they often they often work work well so we've got our, our movement there um, as you, everything removed from it we now have the uh, the, the front um, side of the movement there the front side of the movements obviously this is it this is is, is uh, your hand work basically obviously uh, the middle the middle part the middle cannon and pinion moves you know your minute hand and this part here is, is, is your hour hand so obviously it, it rotates and it's geared so that it rotates slower and you know that this is how it all works I mean that's just done with a um, a sear clip and, and a washer to keep to keep everything together so that just pops off I mean now now we're seeing now I'm seeing that this clock is very modern um, I'm gonna put that actually in the tray with the thing I'm going to put all the motion work uh, the, the hand work sorry, in with the, the thing again get our tyre lever underneath tyre lever anyway levers underneath ok all that type of work just put that in the tin with your escapement making sure you protect your escapement so something doesn't fall and, and hit it and things like that you know that's very important obviously you don't want to be damaging that very expensive part of the clock okay having another look at it again uh, our cannon um, seems to be so I'm just going to try and get well it's quite everything seems quite easy it's went under nicely and, it, and the other thing I'll show you about these levers is you see the way the chamfered you can actually go underneath go across each other as well and pull up as i mean so you know they're, they're a really nice thing and i think they were only they were only about i don't know i think they were about four pound I, I don't think they were there at all i mean not for what they are i mean but you know they you know we've had them for years and you know you, there's not a mark on them not a mark on the clocks we work on either so speaks for itself so that's pretty much the clock in pieces now now at this point there we go what we do is we put put the clock on a couple of stands
your movement stands are these things here now I'm pretty certain you can see how they're going to work so literally now you don't have to over tighten them because if you're over tighten them they're going to leave unsightly marks on the movement really so you just tighten enough so that they don't you know come off i mean one bigger clocks what you'd be probably better off doing is using some kind of you know plastic uh, protection on both ends um you know it, there's various ways, I mean, you, you have to find which, which works for you, but as long as, as I've been taught, as long as you're doing it, and it, you know, it, it, it does the job right and doesn't create any further issues, or, you know, it's not none of its bad workmanship, should we say. Although, there's probably people who think that my workmanship's not good, but there again, I'm not too worried about that. So, now it's just a matter of you know, lifting your movements, jiggling it about a bit, so it comes to pieces, like so. Again, look at the back side of the movements, pretty rotten. I, I really don't understand how that much rubbish has got in there. I do believe that this clock was actually sold to the lady as an antique, but I mean, unless you, someone can chime in and give me any more information, but to me, there's no markings on it, there's nothing. Um, if I look at the dial there's nothing so I really really don't know yes but anyway that's really it so now what we're going to do is we're going to take it to pieces here's your wheels I mean again if you're not sure take photographs of everything brilliant taking photographs you can use your phone you can use you know, you, you you know a dedicated camera. We have a dedicated camera around which we just leave in the workshop, and uh, what that does is that just um, you know we take pictures with that, and then what we can do if necessary, then we I can download them on onto my PC, and then I can blow them up if we need bigger pictures so that we can see how something's gone together. Now, what we do at this point is I'm starting to run out of time. Is I'd check the pinions using my loop. I'm being honest. They look not too bad. They don't look bad at all. I mean, they do need a clean up, a real clean up. But they don't look like there's any wear there. Okay, don't look so. Check that crown wheel out. Make sure you know there's no bent teeth or something like that. There's nothing wrong there okay so that's pretty much that this obviously is another pinion which is you know this, this that, that's your, your drives your hands it's your, your arbor for driving your hands right pop your stands off not a mark anywhere not a mark anywhere set aside Okay, now, spring barrel. Now, to me, you know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna actually do this on camera. But what we do is we'd, we'd, we'd press, we'd, we'd, we'd press, we'd bang that out. We'd, we'd push it forward basically so that the lid popped off, and then. Uh, obviously, we don't use uh, metal hammers and things. We'll use like a, it's like a wooden stake, if you like, and it just and we just gently tap it until it comes out because we don't want to sort of damage the, the the end of the arbor there, you know, the winding arbor. And then we check the spring. Now, the rule of thumb is it's supposed to be the spring is supposed to be two and a half times the diameter of the barrel so you put the barrel to one side and then put the spring next to it if it was two and a half times bigger than the barrel the chances are the spring is okay we personally go for a bit bigger than that uh, and also we feel the spring and we check the spring out for any splits and 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 things and i'll i'll, I'll show you damaged springs in a, in a in another video 
Uh, but yeah, that's that's what we do. Obviously, we take the spring out using a mainspring winder. Um, we picked one up from Germany. Um, it was a. It's not the older type. It, it's 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 more well made for. Um, the likes of fuses and and stuff like that. It's a it's a heavy. It's not really heavy. You bust the way it's made. I mean, sometimes it creaks away, and I'm a bit concerned about it. My uncle thinks anything that's of modern because he's 93 years of age. Anything that's modern doesn't work properly, but it it actually does work quite well. Um, you know, it, it you know it has the sleeves, and you know you don't have to look for anything. Um, but yeah, I mean, it pretty much covers everything except the very smallest uh, carriage clocks. Uh, you know there seems to be you know, you know it, it just doesn't seem to cover them so it's a bit of a problem with them or the very biggest mainsprings and to be fair on some of the fuses stuff, I think fuses of about 50 millimeters, the far, furthest I want to go I don't want to go bigger than that you know we've had some time recording clocks in the workshop and, and some of the springs on them are pretty beefy and uh, I, I mean as much as it's got the sleeves to do it I don't fancy it I don't fancy it just in case uh, so we tend they, they tend to be okay anyway to be honest I mean you know you don't tend to have to replace them to be to be fair um, you know they, they seem to be pretty much okay you check them out obviously but they seem to be okay so that's this video uh, pretty much video number three this is you know all I can say as I say, it to me, I mean, my opinion of the clock. I mean, it, it's it's pretty uh, substantially made. I'll just uh, show you all the parts. I mean, as you can see, there, there there's the stripped down uh, clock itself. You've seen it when it started. I mean, we've stripped it right down. I mean, these posts will come off as well, and they'll be, you know, a lot of this stuff will go into the ultrasonic cleaner. And it'll be cleaned up. You know, the spring will be moved out. That's one of our clocks chiming away. The 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 um the, the spring will be removed out the barrel, and it will be checked for some splitting at it at the ends. And you know, I'm, I'm making sure that we'll give the the barrel a good clean. And if the spring needs replacing, I don't think it'll be a problem uh, to do. But as I say, my general opinion on this clock is it seems to. I mean, there's a, there's a few things that are rough. Uh, I mean, like the casting on that on the on the bottom of that there. I mean that that to me is a little bit rough. I mean, it looks like it's been painted with something as well. Um, the enamel way on that there is a little bit rough. And gluing a piece of glass in. I mean, clocks and glue don't really go together. If I'm honest, I mean, you know, you should try to avoid anything like that uh, as much as possible. But other than that, yeah, it seems okay. Uh, the wheels seem pretty okay. There seems to be, you know, I don't know if you can see that. There seems to be quite a bit of rust deposit on, on, on things. I don't know whether this is focusing in or what. There seems to be a bit of rust deposit. This, this seems to be... Uh, common throughout this clock there seems to be rust I mean I don't know whether she's been wiping it over with a damp cloth or it's been in a damp area or you know something's wrong I mean it's been damp and then the sense of leaking's come on and it's you know but quite a few bits to it but majority of this will go in to the ultrasonic cleaner obviously the platform won't the platform will be stripped down and will be cleaned uh, you know, in naphtha and 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 stuff like that, and cleaned, and and you know that will be inspected under a loop to make sure that there's no no loose jewels or anything like that. I don't suspect there will be, uh, because the clock has been running away for weeks actually, um, without any you know issues. As I say, it didn't come in with an issue. It came it it come in simply. I think more the thing the lady was looking at the actual state of the clock and saying to herself, well, you know. This this really needs um, cleaning and thing, which I, I'm not surprised, but I'm I'm just a bit bemused. It, it it looks, I mean, maybe it's been made to look like that. Maybe it's been made to look antique like that. Maybe you know, I I don't know. I really don't know. But it it seems quite extreme to me. It seems quite extreme. Maybe it's. I don't know, it looks like it's. 
It's been covered in water. I mean, I mean, I wonder, is she not telling us something? Was there a flood in the house? Was that was that was that the, the house flooded and? We've now got the clock, but as I say to you, it, it, it's working away quite happily. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I'll have to check. L looking at from my first initial feelings, I, I, I feel it's a pretty straightforward service job. And uh, obviously there's, there's actually more in the cleaning, isn't there? There's more work in the cleaning than anything, so... Anyway, anyway, this is John from Clock Repairs Merseyside. Uh, I'm hoping to make a couple more videos. I hope you enjoy these videos. I don't mind your comments. Uh, just you know, try to keep them sensible and reasonable. Um, you know, I don't want I don't want abuse, and I won't abuse you. So, you know, that's the way it is. This is my my way of fixing clocks. My family have been in this industry for a long, 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 long time, going back to the middle of the 18th century, um, and you know. So I feel I'm confident and happy enough to share a few videos with you. Hope you like them. See you again soon. Thank you.